What's up? I had a little technical difficulty today, and uh, I got a little pre-music going on. Let people join here. We're just giving a couple of seconds before we get started. Welcome to day 30, the finish line, baby. The sprint towards the end. My name is Steve Melia, and that's Trucking by the Grateful Dead that you're going to hear in the background. Mary Beth, thanks for being the first on. Mary Lynn, welcome to day 30 of 30 ways in 30 days. I believe that at the end of today, for those of you that have been listening, you will have all the tools necessary to be successful and knock out any goal or, or dream that you want. I think you probably, maybe some of you had those tools already. It was a, a refresher call, course for some. And today I'm going to be talking about day 30, the last day. The last day. I'll talk a little bit about what I mean by that. And I'm going to be talking about my last day of the old Steve Melia and the first day of the new Steve Melia. I'm going to be talking about the day that turned my life around. The day discussed, the day resolved, it's been said many ways been said many times, it's sort of like the Christmas song, who else we got, we got Carla, we got Mary Lynn, we've got Jim, we've got Karen, we've got Richard, nice to see everybody, I texted a few of my uh, people that I know have been watching a lot, and uh, just super, super excited, hey guys, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to play you a quick video of a song that a friend of mine wrote for me, I'm going to turn this off. Whoops, actually, cool. I'm going to bring something up on my computer, and I'm going to play you a video called the 162 story. And this is actually, it's about a three-minute video. So this is my last day, so I'm trying to make a little bit of a production average. Laura, what's up? I had a great time in Minnesota. Great people. You guys are awesome. And how can I make this bigger? And so thank you for joining me, guys. I'm going to play a quick video um, actually, my friend Bill Geither helped put this video together. I do want to thank a few people. I want to thank Bill Geither for putting this video together. It's called The Wound 62, The Almost Epic Journey of a Yankee Superfan. If you want to get a copy of this video, you can go on YouTube and just type in my name, Steve Millie, with The 162 Guy. And I want to thank Bill Geither for putting together this video. The guy that sings this song, Raleigh Williams from Austin, Texas. I want to uh, give a shout-out to my buddy Raleigh. Um, I want to thank all of the people that have um, really are part of my life on a daily basis now that I've been able to throw these ideas around. My girlfriend, Mary Beth, um, every day right before I go on, she's like, what are you going to talk about today? And she'd help me, you know, formulate some of my ideas. I want to thank my dog, Desi. Desi is not with us today. I know some of you are disappointed. Thank my business partners, Mike and Kim. Thank all my friends at Legal Shield, And just everybody. Timmer Halligan uh, was someone that really plugged, these, uh, plugged into these and um, shared them a lot, as were many, many of you. Thank you for anybody. I see Chris. Chris, I was uh, sincere what I said about your, um, your live today. I think you're very, uh, you're just more than an intelligent guy. You're a great connector, and um, I thought you, uh, you were really brilliant today. So, guys, what I'm going to do, today's a little going to be fun, all right? It's called The Day That Turns Your Life Around, The Day Discussed, The Day Resolve. But before I get to that, I'm going to play you a quick video to show you why I'm excited about life. Whoops, hold on. i got to turn one thing off. I was listening to trucking to try to get in the mood here. Awesome. Okay, ready? If you say I'm ready, there's a quick video that I want to share with you about my 162 journey. And let's go, baby. Hope it's not backwards. I guess it sort of is. Isn't that a great song? It's got a little bit of a beat to it, doesn't it? Give me a like or love if you like the song, baby. It's the best part. What? 
that I think are funny. Not at the comedy club, no jokes. Tony, Don Franco, Joe Girardi, Reggie, Mike Francesca, Chief, Dr. J, The Catch, Paul Vinny, Good Day New York, yeah. Yeah. Woo. My dad, who the tour was uh, done in honor of. Awesome. Was that fun or was that fun? Give me a like or give me a love if you like to have fun. Wanted to do a little bit something in today's show. And because I'm talking about the day of disgust, I just wanted to, to share with you that, you know, the life I'm living right now uh, is a pretty cool one that I've been able to design. It didn't happen by accident. I wasn't nudged off course to find it. I was certainly uh, able to design it with the help of many of my uh, friends and colleagues and people that I've learned from over the years. I see Tammy Gibbs from Florida. Hey, Tam, hope you're awesome. Sharanda, I hope you're great. Wayne, and who else we got? Michael Hill. Uh, uh, Laura, Chris, Scott. Hey, Scott Scantlin, how you doing? Good to see you, buddy. Scott, I think you might have been in that video somewhere when I went to Kansas City. I'm not sure, but guess what? I think I'm coming back to Kansas City this year. Scott, would love to see you and go to a Yankees-Royals game. I think it's in May, but I have to check the calendar. Uh, hey, guys, today, if you've been tuning in, I've been talking about 30 ways, 30 days uh, that you can really change your life, improve your life, enhance your life, design your life. Whatever you want to say, have a more successful life. And many of you have followed and shared. In fact, when we're done here today, because um, sometimes you get disconnected when you share. But promise me this. Put your right hand up. I will share today's message, and I will share the other 29 um, who I think accordingly uh, with who might be interested. All right? So uh, today, um, I'm excited because I'm going to tell a story that really is, my, is part of my why, but it's the day that I had my day of disgust, my day of resolve. And... You know, for you to have a new chapter in your life, how many would agree that you have to close the old chapter? You have to close the door on the old you, on the old past. And how many, you know, how many people are maybe just sick and tired of being sick and tired? You're sick and tired of being broke. You're sick and tired of driving a beat up car. You're sick and tired of looking at the right side of the menu before you look at the left side of the menu to decide how hungry you are. Uh, maybe you're you're sick and tired of running out of breath every time you run up the stairs or. Uh, you're just sick and tired of the way that it's been going, and today's the day, or maybe it was yesterday, maybe it was, maybe, maybe it was five, ten years ago. Uh, I was on a conference call earlier today with my brother Mike, and he said, you can have many, many days of disgust. And let me tell you what a lot of people do. A lot of people wait until something goes really bad in their life before they want to make a change. They might wait until they have a heart attack to take care of their health, or they wait for a really bad breakup to, to realize that, man, that was a relationship that really – that could have worked, that should have worked. Maybe they, uh, maybe they just, uh, you know, maybe something bad has to happen in, in, for some people to proceed a real change. And I'm telling you, it doesn't have to happen. You can change like that. That's one of the, the beautiful things about being human beings is we have the, you know, the distinction of getting to decide, make decisions in our life about where we want to live, how we want to act, who we want to be around, what do we want to do for a living, you know, what do we want to do for our hobbies, where do we want to travel. It's America, and some of you are watching from Canada, but we live in free countries, okay? Take advantage. If you live in a free country and you're not free, do you really live in a free country, you know? And so today I'm talking about the day that turns your life around, the day of disgust, the day of resolve, 
And I remember Jim Rohn, who I've quoted a lot uh, during these last 29, 30 days now, uh, he told a story, and I'm just going to tell a few stories of other people before I sort of go up, because um, I think I'm just going to end on my story at the end, because it gets very emotional, and I don't really know um, what kind of shape I'll be at the end. I see Ryan Morris, what's up, dignity of choice, absolutely, Jim Vaughn, Matt, again, thanks for watching, buddy, um, and um, uh, tell you, uh, you know, Jim Rohn first, and I'm going to get to a couple stories about my brother, Mike, is Jim Rohn. Uh, tells this story. He's a business philosopher, and hopefully, if you haven't been listening to him, just check him out. Google him and YouTube him and, and listen to some of his stuff. He's got one seminar called the um, How to Have the Best Year of Your Life, and it's four hours and 20 more minutes. And I tell you, it's going to be a powerful, power packed four hours. And if you listen to it and you never have, send me a, a text or an uh, instant message and let me know and let me know some of the things that um, inspired you about what he had to say. But he tells a story about when he was in his mid 20s. And he hears a, you know, the door knock or the, you know, the bell, and he goes and answers, and it's a Girl Scout. And he knew he didn't have the money to buy Girl Scout cookies. You know, he just didn't have them. He was broke. And the girl put on her little presentation. He said she was pretty good. You know, how many boxes did you want or whatever? And he said, well, you know, we've already got at the office. We got plenty of cookies, but thank you. And he was polite and all, but she left away. And he said he just felt so low. He said, how, can you be any lower than lying to a Girl Scout? You know. And for him, everybody's different, but for him, that was the day that he turned his life around. He said, no more, no more am I going to live second class. No more am I not going to go for what I want. No more am I going to have to lie to a Girl Scout. Jim tells another story about this really successful woman in business. And when he asked her, um, you know, she's like a vice president of this huge company, and he asked her, how uh, did you get to where you are? And she said, well, it's a funny story. You know, I was a housewife at one point, and I turned to my husband, and I said, hey, can I have $5? And he said, five dollars, what for? And she's like, what for, right? What for? Five dollars, what for? And she said for her, and I almost even get emotional even though that's somebody else's story that I don't even know, but I get emotional because I know you can turn your life around. You can change your life, but you gotta close one door to get into another. And I had several days in my life where I changed different areas. I remember February 14th of 1999, I had been trying to quit smoking for Many years off and on, I quit. I'd, I'd start. I quit. I'd start. Um, you know, I'd, I, I, I'd lied to myself. I would say things like, "Well, it's okay to to smoke when you drink, or it's okay to to smoke when you're out, or whatever." But the reality is, I was addicted, and I hadn't broken it yet. And a friend of mine at the time, uh, he's passed away since then. Dave Reevely, rest uh, rest in peace, his soul. I was outside in California. Um, we, you know, you can't smoke anywhere now, but back then, especially you couldn't smoke indoors. And so we went outside of a bar and we're hanging out and I had just delivered a great talk that day on the slight edge and the slight edge. Again, you've heard this, it's doing a little things over and over simple errors and judgments for simple disciplines and how success in life is really just a slight difference. And, but it's the decisions that you make. And, um, he said, so I loved your talk today and I was outside having a cigarette and he said, so. Yeah, um, he goes, how does, that, the, how does your smoking fit into the slight edge thing? And he hit me like a ton of bricks, and I was just like, you know, and I, pro I had a few choice words for him, like blank you or something, you know. And, but it hit me, and I tell you what, I woke up that next day, February 15th of 2000 and, or 1999. I haven't had a cigarette since, since, as Jim Rohn would say. So that was one day that certainly uh, turned my life around. Another day, and I'll give credit, uh, these are just little stories that, you know, hopefully – one th a little thing happens, but it made a big change. I used to be a little bit of a, um, you know, a smart aleck. Uh, Noel, even worse. I was, I had, um, sometimes I would take things that weren't mine when I was a teenager, right? Not, not a very cool thing. And, um, and I had a little bit of a problem with that, quite frankly. And when I was, I was camping with my brother Tommy. Yeah, I'm being transparent. Uh, my brother Tommy, we went camping and it was a fireman's trip. And... We were, he wanted me to go get ice, and I came back with ice, and I was like, hey, no one was at the ice machine. Um, and, and I basically said, even though you didn't have to pay for it, I got us a couple of free bags. And he looked at me, and he said, well, let's go back and pay for it. I said, no, no one is, nobody saw me. <laughs> and he said, well, I've got a couple of young boys, Shane and Timmy, and I want them growing up learning the right values. I, I don't want them thinking that stealing is okay or taking something that's not yours. And I tell you, I don't know that I've ever stolen anything since that since that day. And it was the, it was like in a, it was a slap in the face almost. And it was a, you know, it was an interesting situation. I was probably 15 or 16 years old, 17 years old, or whatever I was. I was in my late teens. And little things can make a big difference 
uh, in your life. And so I know my brother Mike is on, and I know that for him, a defining moment in his life when he was 42 years old and his college tuition for his oldest son Luke was sitting on his desk and it was over, 20, I think it was $22,000. Mike, you can correct me uh, if I'm wrong. And he knew that where he was in his life, that financially he wasn't going to be able to tackle it. You know, and, and, and that was a day that turned his life around. It was a day of disgust, right? A day of disgust where you're disgusted with where you are in your life. There was another day, I think it was a little bit before that, same time frame though. Mike was in his early 40s and our dad was having a uh, triple bypass. Might have been quadruple. I think it was tr tr uh, triple bypass in Florida. And most of the kids were going down. There's seven kids. We're all pretty close. But my brother Mike couldn't go. They couldn't afford it. Couldn't afford to get on a plane or a train or a car or whatever. And he, um, for him, that was the day discussed, right? So I'm getting a little emotional. And then another, another time, which was a little bit funnier, but not really, was a time that my brother Mike got a call from his... Uh, my, my brother's my partner and one of my best friends, my best friend, so I, can, I, think, I don't think he might tell the stories, was another time where he got a phone call from his school, the school where his daughter Danielle, if you know Danielle, she's a, a beauty, she's in her early 30s now, and she works in film like she's always wanted to, but they, the school called and they said, hey, your, uh, your daughter's shoes got holes in them, man, you, you need to do something about this, and, and uh, I don't know what he said or how he handled it, but I know getting that phone call was another day of disgust, and I ask you, how many days of disgust are you going to let pile up in your life? before you decide to turn the old you off and turn the new you on and say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of not getting what I want. I'm sick and tired of, you know, being treated this way by the person I'm dating. Or I'm sick and tired of, you know, maybe being treated this way by, you know, by an older parent or just, you know, a neighbor or just whatever. Just sick and tired of being treated this way by a boss or whoever it might be. And... You know, again, don't let like heart attack or diabetes. Don't let someone else determine when your day of disgust is. You determine when your day of disgust is. And I just want to make sure before I launch into my real story here, my last one that I just uh, I, could, I covered everything. I, I love the way that uh, uh, John Addison, who was uh, one of the success editors at the leadership editors at Success Magazine, I think he uh, says it best. He says that if you look at a word like uh, suicide or homicide or pesticide or you know, all these words with a side, a genocide at the end, what do they have in common? Something dies, right? And th that's what you have to do. Is it has to be the, the death of the old you. It has to be the death of the way that you used to do things. If you want to change and you want things to change in your life, we must change, right? Um, I've talked earlier in this 30 days about, about blame. People blame the, you know, everything from the, the, the you know, politics to politicians to, the, you know, the economy, the weather, um, in business, you know, the people that they're working with, their customers aren't buying, their neighbors aren't lending them any money. They blame, 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 blame. But if we want to change and you want to um, have that day discuss, and it's time to turn, turn off the old you and turn on the new you. So I just wanted to, to share really what my number one, and I thought the other ones were good. I thought the smoking one was good and the, the stealing ice from the ice machine was good. But for me, in business, there's one day that turned my life around. It was March of 1993. And I had been out of college for uh, almost two years. Uh, about a year of that, I spent uh, selling perfume and cologne door to door. I had like my own business, and um, I did it for a year. And then right after that, I moved up with my older sister Mary in, in New Jersey. And she got me this job, and I don't blame her for giving me this job. In fact, I like that I had this day to discuss because it led me to where I am today. If the story that I'm going to tell you wasn't so bad, then I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm welcome. I embrace this day of disgust for me. And so, Mike, I see that now that it was a triple bypass. Thank you. Um, so um, I'm working at this company for about six months, and I use the word company very loosely. I was working for a woman named Ellen, and you can look her up if you want. I don't even know that she's still around. Her name is Ellen Zeisler. And since then, I've joked, and it was true, but she was an early uh, adapter to a wonder drug called Prozac. Hmm. Right? You know why they call it a wonder drug? Because whenever you see that person, you wonder what kind of mood they're in. <laughs> I just made that up today. Um, they could be in a great mood or they could be in a really bad mood. And every day at the office, I was the entry level person and there was nobody else they were hiring. So it wasn't like I was going to be replaced. The worst jobs in that office to do, I had to do. And part of, and you, some of you know me, know this story, uh, this part of the story. I used to work, walk the, the owner's poodles every day. And, and that's one reason I didn't like dogs. I love dogs now, but I didn't like dogs for a long time. And I'd have to, I'd have to dress them, and I'd have to put little bonnets on them because it was in New York City. I was living in New York City, so every day I would commute uh, to this job, and I really hated it for six months. One of the things I hated, and this is a little gross, uh, but before I get to what happened that day, 
is every single day I'd have to go through the train station and if I parked my car on one side, I'd have to walk through the other and it smelled like urine. This is the disgusting part, okay? I apologize. It smelled like urine and I hated it. I put my, like this every day when I'd walk through the, the train station, the subway, a certain part of the subway was the same thing and I was disgusted, okay? That was part of my disgusting, but that's not the big story. The big story is it's a Friday afternoon. It's after lunch. It's about two weeks before my friends Rich and Rami are getting married and I hadn't got off yet for the wedding and I didn't know how I was gonna get off and my direct boss was out of town, right? And the big boss, Ellen, crazy Prozac Ellen, um, she owned, I don't know if she owned the building, but the office for everybody was like in a big apartment downstairs and she was upstairs. So she lived upstairs. So she'd come down periodically th through the day. Have you walked the dogs yet? And I was like, oh, and I wanted to, you know, whatever. But luckily I still smoked back then. So at least I could have a little smoke break and walk the dogs. And I had walked the dogs and I'm on the phone. And it was maybe a blessing that I was on the phone because if I wasn't on the phone with my now brother-in-law, Steve Hamburger, I don't know that I would have been so upset that I, that I did what I did. But I'm on the phone. She comes into the office. I can still picture. I can pic picture where my little – it wasn't even a desk. It was a little table. And it was before computers. I'm sure we had computers, but you know, I didn't have a computer. And I remember one guy, Reggie, sitting here, and I remember somebody else was in the back office. And Ellen comes in. And, 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 and again, no disrespect to anybody. Uh, that's ugly, but she was ugly. She was ugly on the inside. She was ugly on the outside. She was an ugly person. She was a rude person. She was a mean person there. I said it. So, um, she, I'm on the phone. She sees him on the phone. She's like, she's like, did you walk the dogs? And I was like, I was, I was like, hold on. Yeah, I walked the dogs. I'm on the phone. And she looks at me. She says, I don't care if you're on the phone. And then she starts to walk into her office and she goes, who opened my mail? And I'm like, and part of my job description, as I started to tell her, it's like, Steve, hold on. I was like, I opened your mail. Christine, who's my, my boss, told me to open the mail. That's part of my job. You want me to do my job, right? She goes, don't get smart with me. Don't ever open my mail. And I said, listen, part of my job is to open your mail. If there's checks in there, I got to get them into the bank before 5 o'clock, and that's my job. Don't you tell me what your job is. And honestly, from there, I don't really know what happened. I know that I got up. I know I was pissed. And I started to walk out of the office. And she says, don't you turn your back on me. And I said, oh, I'll turn my back on you. And a few other words were said. I, I composed myself, though. I didn't curse at her. I didn't throw anything at her. I didn't hit her. Anything like that. And I didn't want to. I'm a nice person. So, but here I am. It's the moment of decision. What do I do? Do I stay? Do I go? Do I stay? Do I go? Get back in here. I said, I'm not getting back in anywhere. And I remember that it must have still been cold out, even though it was March. I remember putting my jacket on, and I went out into the hallway, and I opened the door. And you ever go to a big city, right, where the doors are like, they're thick. You know, like when you hear a door lock, it's like a jail cell. It's like click. And I remember the door closing, and I remember, and I said to myself, when that door clicks, I will never ever let anyone put their thumb on me again. I will never live a life without freedom. I will figure it out. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm never, ever going to have a job again, right? Now, I didn't know if I was going to be able to keep that promise, but since then, I have never gotten a regular paycheck from working a regular job. That was March of 1993. God bless America. We live in the greatest country in the world. Uh, I'm taking advantage of my freedom. Are you? And I'm going to, I'm going to recommend that that you did what I did that day, that you have your day discussed, if you haven't already, or have another day discussed, or look at your life and say, what's good, what's bad, what, what do I like, what don't I like, if I could change anything today, what would I change? And I'm, I'm gonna recommend that you have that resolve, that you make that decision, that you get disgusted, that you turn your life around if it needs to be turned around, whether it's in your health, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your, you know, whatever it is, you know, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? So 30 ways, 30 days, her name was Ellen, Look her up if you want. I don't even know if she's still around. Um, I, that was a fun story. Thank you for letting me vent and tell that story. I think that's the first time I've ever really told that story uh, in a format like this. And I'm just going to take a couple of uh, comments or see what people are talking about. I almost, I almost got really emotional there, um, as you can tell. Yes, I am responsible. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No disrespect to anyone. That's ugly. <laughs> Hope you. And by ugly, I mean on the inside and the outside. You know what I mean? Hope you can keep doing um, videos in the new year. Hey, thanks, man. I am going to be doing some videos. I'm going to be doing a 30-30 series for network marketers. Uh, so if you're in direct sales or network marketing or really any kind of a business where you're the CEO, I look to prevent, uh, provide, <laughs> prevent, provide as much value as I can.
okay? And then my brother Mike is saying, I remember you came to the loft and drank a beer. I did. I walked all the way from Midtown Manhattan. It wasn't really Midtown. I was uh, um, but close to Midtown, all the way down to Tribeca um, through Soho and everything where my brother lived. And it was about within the next couple of weeks that my brother and I uh, became business partners. And we've been business partners since April 19th of 1994. So I'm sorry, this was 94. I said 93 earlier. This is all the March of 94. Okay, I stand corrected. So this is literally, you know, 20, it'll be 24 years ago uh, in March that this day of disgust. And if you could feel like how, how passionate I get, how much I can still remember who was sitting where and, and the fact that I had to go get my jacket and just everything because it was an emotional moment. You know, it was an emotional moment. It was, it was something that if it wasn't so bad, well, first of all, a couple of factors. If I wasn't on the phone with Steve Hamburger, Right, and he heard me. I, I felt so humiliated because one of my buddies was on. We were just talking about what we were doing that night, and then there were other people in the office. I think it was just me and Ellen. Then I might have sucked it up. I might have kept taking it. Stop taking it, guys. Whether you, whether it's your finances not being in order, stop taking it. Right? Someone's talking to you and disrespecting you. Stop taking it. Live the live your life, man. You're meant to be free. You're meant to be free, guys. Thanks for letting me share today. My brother thinks I'm crazy. Uh, I bet that uh, it's awesome to walk away. Uh, from that, it felt so good though. I felt really good. Um, she tried to hire me back too all weekend long. She'd blow on my phone, come back, come back. Uh -uh, uh -uh. And the um, the final part of that story is I applied for uh, unemployment insurance, right? And she fired me. She used the words "you're fired," and I actually had to go to court. Um, I'm at a table uh, on one side of the table uh, with my sister and Hamburger. Steve Hamburger was my witness because he was on the phone and heard hold the whole thing, and he he heard her say "you're fired," and then my sister was a uh, like a character witness of what my attitude was like at the beginning of that job and then six months later what I had become, right? So my sister's there and then she literally went to court to try to fight my uninsurance claims. Well, guess what? Um, I won and then all of a sudden I get like all my unemployment checks for like five or six months added up and all sent to me at once. So I got like a check for like six or seven thousand dollars and that's right when I first got started in network marketing. I had a little bit of seed money to get started. And here we are, baby, 20-something years later, bigger than ever, stronger than ever, and guess what? More free than ever. You know, again, we live in two free countries, United States and Canada. If there's other people watching, great. But I'm asking you, are you free? Are you free? I hope you are. If not, get with me or somebody else that uh, is in the kind of business where we're helping people create freedom. Everybody have a great day. God bless. 30 ways in 30 days. Have a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy New Year. I will be back on again. Uh, this has been fantastic. I am going to take these 30 ideas and I'm going to spend uh, some time over the next couple months writing every day, uh, going over these ideas, add and taking stuff away. And I will be, you have my word, I'm going to deliver a book to you in 2018 called 30 Ways and 30 Days to a Better Life or something like that. It'll be it's very similar uh, to that. And I hope everybody buys a copy for you and all the people that you love. And I would love to autograph it. And I would love to come to your home and have all of your friends buy books and do a little uh, stand-up comedy. And I would love to go to a Yankee game with you. And I would love to connect with you. And the other thing I'll say as I do wrap up, I like Jim Rohn. I just keep closing. In closing, uh, what I'd like to say is that my podcast, The 162 Experience, is going to be... Um, is, go, is going to be uh, launched, relaunched. We actually missed a whole season, but guess what? We're coming back for season two. Uh, I did 30 episodes, and there's 30 great episodes, but this year it's even going to be better. I'm going to be traveling all across the North America. Before I used to make people come to me. Now I'm going to take my equipment to them, and we are going to rock it with the 162 experience. So if you would like to be a guest and you feel like you've achieved some level of success or you've got some bright ideas, I'd like to interview you. Or do you know anybody? Do you know Aaron Boone, the new manager of the New York Yankees? Do you know Brian Cashman? Do you know CC Sabathia? Do you know anybody on the New York Yankees? Do you know anybody that makes decisions on who throws out the first pitch at a Yankee game? Because that is one of my goals that I write down. Do you know Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show? Do you know anybody that knows Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show? I actually sent him a book uh, yesterday. Uh, do you know my old friend Ellen Zeisler? <laughs> if you do, tell her I said hello. Um, and hey, if I can do anything to help you, if I can do anything to, to serve you or help you reach a goal or you've got an idea that you want to share with me, you've got a project that you want to work on with me, hey, pick up the phone, send me a text, Facebook me, Snapchat me. Actually, I'm not on Snapchat anymore. Instagram me. Uh, but as you can tell, Saying goodbye is, is very difficult, and I don't want to say goodbye, but I'm going to have to really soon. I want to thank uh, everybody that's watched any of these. Please share this one today, or please go back to my Facebook page. I'm probably going to uh, somehow, maybe Mary Beth will do this, is transfer all these 30 ways, 
onto my website, which is the 162guy.com, so people can reference it and go back to watch. So thank you for all the likes. Thank you for all the loves. Kim, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining in. Mike, rock and roll, bro. I got Cecilia. I got Keith. Who do you know that I should know? Uh, John Maxwell. Uh, James Vaughn, Carla, and everybody. God bless everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in over the last 30 days. It's been phenomenal. I think I probably learned just as much as anybody else. And just thanks for listening. God bless and have a great day. Happy 2018. May you achieve every goal and be as free as you want to be. Bye-bye.